Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at two different products and I've got a little build over here. We can take a quick peek at that, but I needed to use those products so I built some one up uh, using these. Uh, over here on the left we have the Nameless RC, also uh, you find this under the Full Speed RC brand and it is, is their Super All-in-One or AIO. This is a flight controller ESC and as you can see there on the box, DVR. And the DVR uses a micro SD card, goes right in there. You can see there's no retention clip. There is no spring loaded in there. Uh, but through my crashing and tuning of that little quad that I showed you briefly, I didn't have any problems with the SD card coming out. So that was my primary concern. Uh, we'll get more into this in just a few minutes. And then we have the OVX 300 uh, from Happy Model, which is based upon the uh, reference design and possibly the collaboration of Jai Smith. You might know Jai from the Express LRS, uh, quite a developer that guy is. I'm not going to cover this too much. You'll get to see the video reception as I fly it around on this little quad in my space. I didn't do a side-by-side -side uh, VTX uh, comparison. What is most cool about this, outside of it being open source and having the potential of having future firmware improvements like we've seen with Express LRS, is that this does not require you to know what your smart audio or your tramp protocol is. It can use either one. Uh, it's based upon, well, I think it was Immersion RC that published uh, their information about tramp and it's uh, smart audio communication. And I think uh, Jay went through Betaflight to find out what he could find out about the smart audio uh, from TBS just to break this down. Um, Fubar Phil has got a full and complete video on this. And uh, it is a power switchable VTX up to 300 milliwatts, and that's why it's called the OVX 300, of course, Open VTX. Uh, Fubar Phil's video even takes you through the flashing process. Uh, he's got a different receiver in his than this one, but uh, it should basically give you uh, a lot more detailed information from a developer or coder sort of standard. Also, it's really cheap. I saw it on Race Day Quads yesterday for $11.99. And if you're looking for a VTX and you've been following the component prices, our stuff is getting more expensive, and somehow this is still $11.99. So if you're looking for a tiny little uh, VTX that's capable of 300 milliwatts and future improvements is a potential that you like, maybe something to check out. There'll be links down in the video description to both of these products. Okay, back to the Super AIO here. Now, we could go down this left-hand side, but I'm just going to hold it here for you, and I'm gonna tell you that it has five full UARTs on here. So for a 1S board, again, this does not take voltage above 1S. Uh, you could do GPS, you can do um, Express LRS, you can do Smart Audio. I've done Express LRS and Smart Audio on here. We'll, we'll look at this quad quickly before we take a look at the DVR. Uh, the DVR is uh, fairly interesting to me as well because it's advertised as 30 frames per second, but I was seeing anywhere from um, uh, kind of upper 24 fil uh, frames per second and to about 25 and a half frames per second on my recordings. Uh, so I didn't see the 30 frames per second, and I did try a couple of different SD cards, uh, formatting them, uh, doing all the things you typically do in this hobby to troubleshoot uh, DVR issues. Again, this is right here in the back. This is where we slide our card in. It's not spring-loaded. We don't have any sort of retention clip or anything like that. But, you know, through my tuning and crashing of this guy, again, I didn't have any problems. And that was my primary concern, was losing an SD card. What good is a board? And having a, a DVR on board if you're going to be losing the SD card. I think the smart thing that they did was not making this spring loaded. Uh, so you will need to make sure you push it all the way in in order to be able to uh, get that recording going. And speaking of get, getting the recording boat, uh, excuse me, getting the recording going, we have a button right here on the side. And then there's an LED light here in the middle. I think it might be just above where my fingernail is. Uh, I'll show you on that quad over here. And uh, so you press. Uh, to start and stop, although it does record automatically, so you don't actually have to press it to start it unless you stopped it, and then you have to press it to start it again. Uh, but you do need to stop your recordings. If you don't stop the recordings and you unplug uh, your battery, then you do lose that last uh, recording. Something to note there. Also, uh, I had uh, I put Emu Flight on it, so it came with Beta Flight. I put Emu Flight on it, and I found that I had to press the boot button in order to get into DFU mode. Could be just my computer, but uh, something I want to share my experience. I did have one other person that I was reading about their experience with this board on Facebook, 
And I believe that they were having similar troubles of getting into DFU mode, but their issue was their receiver. So I can't really get into what role the receiver played and whether it was maybe just soldering, not so much the receiver. I can't say. But in my experience, I did have to press the boot button in order to get into Emu Flight. Uh, of course, it comes with this uh, kind of plastic sort of uh, tweezers. Uh, I think these are supposed to help you get the gummies in there. I didn't use them. Uh, we got these four gummies and, of course, a PH20 rolled pin connector. I did not use a rolled pin connector on my end. I had to use the uh, XT30 on mine. And uh, you can see my little Express LRS receiver right down there. And then I've got my OVX 300 Open VTX right here. Got my bent up through there. Again, Fubar Phil, I'll link his video on this uh, OVX uh, 300 down in the uh, video description. And then I used uh, one of my 40 millimeter rubber bands that I got from Oh AliExpress. Jeez, almost forgot. I originally did have my famous motor tape or motor wire tape on here, uh, but because I had to disassemble and reassemble a few times through my process, uh, I don't have that tape on there currently. Uh, you can see the soldering on here. I'm not necessarily trying to draw your attention to my soldering, whether it's uh, expert level or not, probably not. Uh, but you do have these vertical pads, which do give you a really good connection when it comes to your wires. And it does, in my opinion, make it a little bit easier to solder these tiny little wires to these pads when they're vertical like this, because you can just tin the uh, pad and then you lay the wire in there and then you take your soldering iron, just lay it against the wire and then it kind of melts in there and then you bring your iron off and you're all set to go. Okay, uh, the DVR does record in a widescreen format. So what you're looking at is just a simple flight. And uh, again, this is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 24 to 25 and a half frames per second as far as the footage goes. Although this video is rendered at 60 frames per second. So there's gonna be a little bit of a difference there. Uh, this board is not free or cheap, comes in above $75. So uh, it is an option. And there's one more detail that you need to know after we take a look at the uh, flight a little additionally and I'll share with you the DVR files uh, are recorded in AVI format and they are using the IBM Motion uh, JPEG codec. Um, I'm seeing an audio sample rate of 800 Hertz. Um, the audio bit rate is 128 kilohertz, not that that matters. And then we have the resolution, which I kind of already said 16 by 9, 1280 by 720. Um, and this particular video, I got 25.211 frames per second according to Video Inspector. Uh, bit rate on the video side is 15,711 kilobits per second. Quality factor, which I'm not all that familiar with, uh, 0.69 B slash PX or bits per uh, pixel. Again, if you're curious about the codec, IBM Motion JPEG codec on that DVR. $11 micro VTX. I do need to weigh it, so that's important. Now I want to weigh the, both of these. Oh, before we get to that, I've got a frame sitting over here just the side. I wanted to draw your attention to this. I, I don't think too many of our veterans would be confused by this, but it was something I thought about. It's because oftentimes these uh, all-in-one boards, we refer to them as whoop boards. In this case, not so much. Uh, I'm not going to say you can't mount it in there, but you're definitely going to be getting some overhang. Uh, so you'll need some creativity to mount either below your whoops or your prop cords or above like you see here. Uh, but the board is just uh, bigger so it works better in an open prop configuration which is why I have it in this. So keep that in mind. Don't expect to buy this and then stick it inside your whoop. Pretty much all the whoop boards are the same size as far as the maximum size go. This just isn't one of them. Okay, onto our weight. Okay, the uh, OVX 300. Looks like it weighs 0.88 grams without its antenna. If I add the stock antenna that it comes with, we get 1.45 grams. The all-in-one board itself looks like it weighs uh, 6.33 grams. And if we add our gummies for mounting, I get 6.65 grams. I think I mentioned it previously in the video, but it has five UARTs, five full UARTs that you can use. All sorts of configuration options. Um, and I, I took a quick moment to take a look at my little build here, but I wanted to take in another moment because I know I went by that pretty quickly. Uh, so I've got my OBX 300. I've got my EP2 over here. And uh, I've got all my wires stuck over here on the side. 
Yes, and then um, these, if you buy these motors and want to run them in this same sort of frame and configuration, this is a, a uh, Dave C. designed frame I got from CNC Madness. I believe this one's called the Dirty Sanchez. You can see it's got three mount points. It doesn't have a fourth mount point uh, for the board on the front, so you kind of have to have a freewheeling board out here. Uh, but note right here, hopefully next to my finger, I had to extend the motor wires a little bit uh, because... Well, I, I, I might not have had to if I'd have gone over the top, but I didn't like that idea of taking my motor wires over the top. I had to take them underneath, and I did need to extend them a little bit to do that. Um, and one of the disadvantages of having a, a kind of a perfectly square board, um, sometimes you can take advantage of having the uh, ESC pads, you know, right here on the corners. Also note that mine is not oriented right. See the arrows over here? So this is the front of the uh, quad as far as how the uh, hardware is aligned. So it should fly like this natively. Of course, I mounted it like this, mainly because I'm just used to the USB port being over here on the all-in-one boards. And so I just uh, changed uh, the gyro and the accelerometer and beta flight and turned it 90 degrees or 45 degrees, whatever I'd do to make the nose forward there so it would fly properly. And of course, when you do stuff like that, then you got to double check your motors, make sure, you know, motor one is connected to motor one, ESC, uh, two, three, and four. Uh, so you don't get some of those uh, freak outs on arms that we've seen time and time again. And I used, uh, to make sure we uh, tested the DVR fairly well, I used the Caddx Baby Rattel 2 which is a nice $25, at least that last time I bought, they were $25 cameras, really nice camera, especially for $25. And they're a nice middle ground between the ultralight, like Caddx Ant or Runcam Nano 3, as well as um, less weight than traditional, like Toothless 2s or the non-nano version of the Rattel. Uh, so I, I really like the camera for price, weight, and uh, image quality. And I wanted to use it uh, again so that we got a pretty good sample of that DVR on there. So what do you think? Do you like the idea that Jay Smith is out there developing more open source and he's looking at our VTX? I think that's pretty exciting because ExpressLRS has been exciting. And if this has, I don't know what you would do with the VTX. I don't know how they work. I don't know what you can do from a software standpoint to enhance them further. Maybe he's already got a bunch of ideas. I don't know, but I, I think it's pretty cool. Open source is pretty cool in my opinion. And then we have a uh, full speed RC or nameless RCs all in one board. Uh, I looked on, on their site for this board. You can find it at sites like uh, Pyro Drone, Race Day Quads, Get FP. Well, I don't know about Get FPV. I'll list down below where I can find this board. But uh, it's oddly not on the namelessrc.com website, but it is on the fullspeedrc.com website. And again, it comes in around $77. Oh, something I didn't show you is the recording. So before I get to that, I just wanted to show you kind of how it looked when you put your SD card in there. It does stick in there pretty well. And, you know, I just cut my nails. Excuse me. I just cut my nails the other day. So I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's coming loose. Well, I thought it was. There we go. I got it. So it's not real sticky to get in there. But, of course, you can see when you put the, the card in there, it's nearly flush. So you're going to need to get access. If you need to take the card in and out, which I presume you do because you're recording and you want to get that on your PC, you're going to need a way to get access to the bottom. Like in my case, I would use a pair of tweezers like this, and I would stick it up through the frame, and I'd try to catch the lip on there and put some pressure on it and flick, flick the SD card out. You could grab it this way and pull it out as well. Uh, I found that a little bit tougher just to kind of get my fingers and my eyes all down there in the same location. Let's put it in this quad and uh, we'll show you how the uh, recording works here. Yeah, I put a 64 gig card in there. That's too big. Okay, now we're going with a 16 gig card. All right, 16 gig card and now we're going to give it a go. This should start recording automatically. There we go. Now we're getting a blinking white light that indicates recording. There is no on-screen indication that you're recording. So when you're looking at the goggles, if you want a goggle reminder, nah, there isn't one. You've got to look at the board in order to know whether you're getting a DVR recording or not. Also note that you do not see the OSD in your recordings. So don't expect to see the OSD elements from Betaflight or EmuFlight or any other software you might put on here on the recording. It doesn't have that. It's strictly the video from the camera itself. Nothing from the board. And then to uh, stop your recording, you press the button, and then the light goes white solid. And if you wanted to start again, you just press the button again. Almost forgot to show you that part. Okay, now I'm done. Yes, I got it, Amber. Te telemetry lost. We got the OVX and the Super All-in-One. Which one do you want? And uh, 
what are you gonna put it in? Don't forget about Fubar Phil's uh, video, link down in the video description down below on the OVX 300. Good job, Phil, I really enjoyed your video. Thank you very much for doing that. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.